but it's not going to hurt you to go back through it again. And then we'll do a couple practice problems for today's quiz, okay? That's what we'll do. So, start with the quiz that you just got back where you had to graph something. All right, so here we go. We are going to sketch this curve. That's how we're going to start. We like to start by factoring. And those of you, I don't know if there's any of you here today or not, just in your absence, but some of you factor wrong. And what happens when you factor wrong? The whole thing's messed up. So it is worth it to take, you know, 10 seconds and foil these back out and make sure you have the right factoring. So go ahead and set up your factors however you think they're supposed to be. But then FOIL, x squared minus x plus 3x minus 3. Okay, so now I know my top is right. x squared minus x plus 4x minus 4. Now I know my bottom's right. Take a second to do it because I was kind of lenient when I graded it. You made that mistake. I kind of took that into account. But I'm not going to keep doing that. We need to be able to factor. We're seniors in high school. We can do it. Just take a second and check. Well, if you got it factored correctly, you notice what? It canceled. So we're down to this equation right here. This is the equation that we have. And we need to now um, can we go get yours? We need to now graph this. Okay? So the fact that we have a cancellation tells me I'm going to have a hole in my picture. And where is that hole going to be? Look what canceled out. Where is that hole going to be? One. At one, where x is one. Now, how do I find the y? Plug the one in. Plug the one in right here. So what do I get when I plug in one here and one here? What do I get? Four fifths. Four fifths. So I have a hole in my graph at one comma four fifths. Now, some of you don't know where to put four fifths. Well, it's just four fifths is a little bit less than one. That makes sense to me. If it doesn't make sense to you, then you'll have to figure it decimally. 0.8. Four fifths. Five fifths is one. So four fifths is a little bit less than one. Now, what else do I have in my picture? The hole's taken care of. That's done. What else do I have? Where? One. This gives me my horizontal asymptote. There's a horizontal asymptote at y equals one. Okay. Vertical asymptote at x equals negative four. Now, some of you are putting asymptotes every which way. I don't know why you're doing it. Over and over again, we have said vertical asymptotes come where your denominator is zero. All right, what else? X and Y intercept. Thank you, Marlon. We need the X intercepts and the Y intercepts. And those come from letting each variable, one at a time, be zero. So if we want our x-intercept, we're going to let y be 0. And if we want our y-intercept, we're going to let x be 0. So that's the easiest one. If x is 0, if these are zeros, 
then y just turns out to be 3 4 so I have a y intercept at 0 3 4 how do I find my x intercept I let y is 0 and we talked about this before if you put a 0 here and you multiply this over to here, it just disappears because when you multiply by zero, it stays zero. So you end up solving the numerator. Where is your x-intercept? Negative, Negative three. Negative three. Now, all the blanks on the quiz should be filled in now, right? So now it's just a matter of connecting the dots. So I'm going to connect these dots. It's pretty obvious what's happening here. And a couple of you stopped there. And I get it. I mean, that, those are the only points that you actually plotted. But remember, these things always, always have a piece on the other side of the asymptote you've got the right side covered but you've got this whole side of the curve I need to graph something over here where am I going to graph it top left, top left. some of you lost a tenth of a point because you don't have your curve approaching the asymptote be sure that you understand the asymptotes are the frame. They contain the picture. So as you go farther down, you're getting closer to that asymptote. As you go farther up, you're getting closer to that asymptote. As you go farther out, you're getting closer to that asymptote. Anybody have a question about that? You still have your practice tests out? Look at the front page. What's the front page of the practice test? Ay, yeah, yeah, it looks just like this, doesn't it? What do you think the front page of your test is gonna look like? Just like that. So this isn't something we're gonna set aside and not think about anymore. You need to remember how to do these things. Okay? All right. Now, we're going to practice for the quiz we're getting ready to take. And the quiz we're getting ready to take has two problems on it. Not just one, but two. So if you want to get out a piece of paper or somehow, I don't know where you want to write this down. These are two practice problems now. So the first one looks like this. And the second one looks like this. Now, honestly, I can't remember which order they are on the quiz. These are the two kinds of problems on the quiz, okay? So one looks like this with an inequality, and one looks like that with all those fractions. Now, what does this board tell you about any problem with an inequality? We are going to draw a number line. Now, I'm not ready for it yet, but I'm going to draw it. I'm going to be ready when it comes time. What do I do to get that problem started? I factor it just like I did yesterday's quiz, and just like I do every problem I look at. If it factors, I factor it. So how does this one factor? X plus seven, X minus two. Is that okay with everybody? Now, two dots go on the number line. Where will those two dots go? At negative seven and positive two. And when I put my dots on the number line, make sure you have them in the right order, right? Even if they're not that order in the problem. 
Yes, they're on the number line. They're in the right order. Will those dots be open dots or closed dots? Open. Open dots. Right? If that had an or equal to on it, I would color them. Now what do I do? Pick a number. Any number except these two. So one. One's a great number. One is here. Pay attention to where it is. One is here, right? So I'm going to put one in. And if I put one in, I get eight times negative one. If I put one in for the x's, one is eight times negative one. Negative eight. Negative eight. Is negative eight bigger than zero? No. No. So this didn't work. This did not give me an answer that I wanted. So I'm going to cross this off. It doesn't work. Now, if that one doesn't work, then what does that mean? This one will, and this one will, because I know the working, not working sections alternate unless my problem has a square on it, something like that, which ours isn't on this quiz for sure. So then I write my answer. What's my answer? Uh, negative, negative infinity, infinity to negative 7 or, or 2 to positive infinity. Where do you put the brackets? If the dots are closed. Infinity will never be bracketed because you can't close infinity. But if the dots were closed, those two numbers would have brackets. Is it what? If the dots close in the middle, will always be negative? No, no, no. That has nothing to do with it. it we're talking about brackets, where I write my answer. If the dots are closed, if this had been an or equal to, absolutely nothing would change except this. That has nothing to do with the shading or not shading. Does it always be a zero in the middle? Always. It's an or. It's an or. All right, now we got this guy. It's a different kind of problem. It is not an inequality. Do not draw a number line. There's no drawing at all on this problem. What do we do with this guy? Factor. factor. So that part starts the same. We're going to factor. And then what? We're going to multiply everything. And there were some kids in this morning to take the quiz because they're responsible and they knew they were going to be missing. And we did some practice problems before they took the quiz. And some of you, some of them, are just too dang lazy to write this down. And every kid that didn't write it down missed the practice problem. Now, I don't know, I haven't graded the actual quizzes yet, but take, you know, the 10 seconds that it takes and write down what you are multiplying by, which is the two pieces of your denominator, x minus 1, x minus 3. You can think, oh, I'm too smart, I don't need to do that. Just do it. Write it down. Then cancel. Now it becomes so painfully obvious what's left. What's left here? 2x squared minus 6x. What's left here? Plus x minus 1. What's left here? 2. We're going to get it set equal to zero, so we're going to move that two over, and we're also going to combine those, right? So we have 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Is that 
that is a quadratic. Hopefully it will factor. still going to check it. Minus 6 plus 1 gives me minus 5 is right. I got it right. So what are my answers? One half. X equals negative 1 half because I set this equal to 0 and solve it. Or X equals 3. Wait a minute. Can't be 3. Can't be 3. Because if x were 3, you'd have a 0 down here, right? And you can't. So the only answer to the problem is negative 1 half. Right, anybody have a question about that one? After you got the, after you got the, how did you get the answer again? Set equal to 0. Set each factor equal to zero and solve it. So if you set it equal to zero, you add one and divide by two. That's how we got one half. Okay? All right, here we go. The wind chime. It's only the front of the page. So I don't know what's on your back. It doesn't matter.